you guys have a teenager that has one of those VR sets that he was just talking about? I, mean, I see some hands going up. I have to tell you this funny story. The other day I was hosting a young adult teen Bible study at my office, and um, I managed to hurt my back not that long ago really badly and was basically immobile the other night. I didn't want to totally cancel the Bible study, and I thought, oh, we'll make it work. Well, we made it work by me laying on the floor while the kids ran the Bible study. <laughs> and it was so cute because, and I say cute, these are young adults, I probably can't use the word cute. Um, one of the students had said to me, I got you. He goes, we're gonna put a VR headset on you, connect it to a Bluetooth keyboard, and you could just lay there and work because you could just see everything that you're doing in the VR headset. And I, at first I kind of giggled and I'm like, <laughs> that actually is not a bad idea. Like, <laughs> he, you know, this kid is probably, what, 16 years old, and he is already, you know, thinking along the lines of what we in the real estate industry are looking at how we're going to be running our businesses. And so what Glenn is talking about with, um, you know, the virtual opportunity, the, these, these VR headsets, I, I mean, I know I probably show my age a little bit, but I kind of laugh about it a little bit because I'm like, I don't know if I want to be at work with this VR headset on, it might look kind of funny. But the reality is our industry is changing, right? And that's something that us as real estate agents um, and, and just in the real estate industry in general, we know that if there's one thing that is a constant, it's that our industry is always on the move, right? Always on the move. So I want to take just a second and I want to recognize our sponsor today. If everybody in the Annie Mac Wilcox Mortgage Group could stand up. Yes, I'm going to recognize you for just a minute. <laughs> Wave at everybody. Make sure everybody knows who you are. You guys, they are making this event possible, so please seek them out. Introduce yourself. One of them's hiding out in the back, back there, trying to be incognito. Um, but please, you know, seek them out. Tell them thank you. Uh, this event is being made possible by all of them. So thank you very much for that. I appreciate it. Um, all right, we do have, I don't know where they went, but I thought it was kind of funny. You know, we talked about the 20 years in the business, and then we have literally the youngest one in the business. I don't think anybody in here can beat the baby that was over here. I, those that know me know I'm a baby magnet, and I love to go cuddle the babies. So I'm sure I'll be seeking out the baby here in a minute. So for our next speaker, um, <laughs> I know in a mi minute ago I had you guys stand and reach for the roof to stretch. I'm going to have you do the opposite right now. You need to hold on to your seats, both sides of your seats. Hold on tight. I'm actually terrified because I don't know where he's at right at the moment, and I feel like he could come up behind me at any second because his energy will rock this room. Um, this person, before I introduce him, he sold real estate in Sacramento, California since 1997. Another, another one of us that has a lot of years in the business. He was the number 11 worldwide agent uh, with his previous brokerage at Remax, as well as the number one team in California. He is a world traveler. Yes, that he is. He spends a lot of time in Puerto Rico. Um, an in-demand speaker. He is a newly published author of a book called Momentum. Uh, if you have not gotten it, I highly suggest that you do. It is about how to become a super agent. He runs a 23-agent team in California, and I just spotted him. I see him. At least I know he's not running up behind me. You guys, please give a huge round of applause for Brent Gove. All right, hello, how you guys doing? You guys are in big trouble. I've been in the back going back and forth and drinking coffee. I may just go to the ceiling, I'm gonna go. Okay, you guys ready to have some fun today? So we're gonna start off with the story of my life. Isn't that a good one? Now I was a history major and I love dates, so we're, I promise to keep this quick. 1966, March 2nd, what happens? I'm born. San Diego, California. Grew up on the Silver Strand, La Jolla, Southern, on the beach. I'm a beach kid. 1976, Grandpa passes away. We moved to Sacramento, California. 
had a great life, rivers and lakes and fishing and houseboating and all that stuff. Uh, fast forward, 1986, I'm in college, Chico. It's a small Bible college up north, right? And, and it's called Chico State. Anybody heard of that place? It was voted number one party school in America. Like, I'm going to Yale for engineering, right? I knew, who know? I was like, number one party school? That's the place for me. And uh, they had great fraternities called, like, I Tapa Coors. <laughs> I actually became a Christian there, of all things. You know, I went there, and I, woo And then I'm like, whoa You know, anyways, that's a whole other story. I know I won't preach to you, but I'd like to. Okay, so I... I get a really prestigious, high-paying job, lucked out, at the, uh, became a dishwasher at the dorm. Come on, raise your hand, fellow dishwashers, fellow paper route deliverers. I had all the lawns in my neighborhood wrapped up. I was the lawnmower. I was that 10-year-old pushing the lawnmower like three miles. But you know what? I was scrappy. Anybody scrappy out there? Anybody tenacious, passionate, internal grit? fire, willing to get on the struggle bus, because that's what it takes to make it in life. And you know how I learned that? In 1986, actually 85, that's why I did well in 86, my dad gave me these tapes, these cassette tapes, and as I'm washing dishes at Craig Hall, the off-campus dorm, the wild dorm, and uh, I'm washing dishes with my big polyester bib with about four other dishwashers because it's a huge dorm, and I have my Sony Walkman. Remember Guardians of the Galaxy? Remember the guy? Dun, 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 dun. Right? I can't dance. Okay, I won't dance, but I like to dance. My kids say, Dad, don't. It's embarrassing. I have five kids. We adopted three. Actually, I have eight kids now. I need to update my bio. Yeah, let's hear it for kids. So, um, so I'm listening to Zig Ziglar. And he's talking about, you got to have goals. you got to have a target. you got to have a purpose. He's got that southern twang. I'm not very good at it. But um, he says, you're either a wandering generality or a meaningful specific. So I'm going to ask you today, what, what are you? Are you a wandering generality? You're like, what are you doing right now? I want to show some property this weekend. Hopefully you want a listing appointment. It sounds pretty general to me. Or are you a meaningful specific? I am showing property today to somebody, no matter what. I'm obsessed. Someone's seen a halfplex, a condo, a multi-million dollar mansion, a ranch, something. I'm going to show something. And when I set the goal to become very specific in my real estate practice, I said every day I'm showing a house to somebody. I don't care who, I don't care what, but I'm showing property. All of a sudden, I went from selling you know, three or four homes a month to selling 14 homes a month. Who would like to sell 14 homes a month? I set a goal very specific to sell 30 homes in 30 days. Just myself, no team. Are you going to sell 30 homes in the next 30 days? And here's why you're not going to do it. Because you don't have the goal to do it. Write this down. Ready? You can't hit a goal you don't have because you don't have the goal. You're not even thinking about it. Who agrees with that? Like, why will you not clean your garage today? You don't have a goal to do it. Why is your car messy? You don't, you get what you tolerate. Like the Starbucks cars and the wrappers and all that, you know? And so you got to get to the point where you're very focused. So I'm listening to these Zig Ziglar tapes and, and how does this, just hang in here with me. I'm listening to these Zig Ziglar tapes and, and the other dishwasher's like, what's he doing over there? And because and, they're listening to music and laughing and on break smoking, you know, the green stuff. You guys got that up here? You know, green. And I got Zig Ziglar, and, and I'm like, you're paying me to learn how to become successful. It's the greatest thing in the world. And they, uh, the dishwashers, they started making fun of me. Do you know that there's politics even in the dish room? <laughs> like, I was embarrassed. Who loves to be made fun of? Do you like to be made fun of? You want to make fun of you? You want to make fun of you? I didn't like it either at, at 19. It kind of hurt. And, and they all made fun of me. And the leader was Kevin. Now, 10 years later at 29, Kevin called me and apologized because I was pretty dang successful a decade later. He's like, man, I should have been listening to those. We said he's listening to those cult tapes. 
The guy sounds funny, Zig Ziglar. And they're just getting high and partying. But I'm listening to Zig Ziglar. Started listening to Jim Rome. Started reading Og Mandino books, Dale Carnegie. I started listening to guys like John Maxwell on leadership and adding value, adding value. Well, so-and-so took my listing. Look, nobody took your listing. They just gave more value and the homeowners chose them, right? If you get beat, get better. How many agree that's a good thing? Like, here's the deal. I can't compete. I can't p- compete with Don. Look at him. He's tall. He's handsome. You know, I'm, I'm too skinny. I'm too fat. I'm too short. I'm too tall. I don't smile enough. I can't speak like, I couldn't speak like this either. Do anything enough, you'll get good at it. I'll prove it. Who here is a great snowboarder? Five of you. <laughs> okay. It is pretty good. Do you remember the first time you snowboarded? Did you just nail it or did you fall on your butt a lot? Did you have bruises? Did it hurt? And, and are you pretty good right now? Like you catch some air and stuff? And did you, did you just, he's very good. Like how good, tell me, tell me, what, what, like, what is this? What, what does it mean? Let's have a talk. What's your name? Brendan Howell, nice to meet you. So how good are you, man? Be honest, I'm asking. To, like, uh, for somebody that you know, grew up in a, a town not close to a mountain, I'd say I'm pretty above average. You get, you get, you, are, are you able to get up in the air? Yeah. How, how high have you been? Oh, uh, well, it depends if I'm hitting a cliff or if it's just like a... <laughs> if I'm hitting a cliff! Woo! I'm okay! Woo! Woo! You know? So here's the deal. Some of you want to fly in your real estate cl- uh, practice, but you're not willing to biff face first. If my next book's going to be, um, you, you want to succeed? It's going to say, say stupid stuff often with velocity. <laughs> like, just get it over with. The reason you're not any good at listening is you go on one every three months. Right? The reason you don't have a lot of buyers and escrows is you're not showing property every day. But here's the good news. Passion, grit. Focus, determination, bootstrapping, sucking it up, being willing to look adversity in the face. None of those things require a college degree. Quit saying to yourself, I need a college degree. You do not need a college degree. You don't need an MBA. You don't need a PhD. I'm not even sure Glenn graduated from college. Glenn, did you graduate from college? Come on, baby. He's America's newest billionaire. I didn't graduate from college either. If you're in college, drop out. Just kidding. Now, so literally, I was at the mayor of Pulalup. Did I say it right? Mm, first time. He's a, the mayor, the new mayor. He was all three of my kids graduated from college. None of them can get a job. Why are you still going to college? It takes their heads and turns it into mush. Okay. Now. I told my kids, they all buy real estate at 18. My kids have hundreds of thousands of dollars worth of equity. They all start businesses. I put them in private schools that taught them how to get in business for themselves, not go to work for somebody. Kevin O'Leary, is that his name, Shark Tank? He said, a job is something people give you that you exchange for your goals and dreams in life. I tell my kids, I beg them, fail, man. Go out there and fail. Just go do it in your 20s. Go try things. Face plant. That's how I succeeded in real estate. See, my first six months, I sold three homes. I was not rookie of the month. I was not rookie of the year. The next year, I sold, though, 18. Wasn't even the rookie of the year. I mean, nobody even noticed me. The next year, 28. The next year, 48. And I made almost $400,000. That was my story. Now, my parents were 55-year real estate brokers, and I called my mom and dad every single time, eight to ten times a day, going, what about this, what about this, what about this, what about this? I wore my own mother out. (laughs) She follows me on 360. You ever heard of that thing? She's like, ooh, you're in Salem. How's it look? I take a picture of all of you guys, your butts and your backs of your heads, because I was in the back, like, it looks good. (laughs) Salem looks good. And, And my mom's funny, but see... She's like, how can anybody have this many questions? I, don't wanna, I, I didn't want to make mistakes. I was willing to grow. And so I want to encourage you. Be willing to ask questions. Don't stay silent. Put your chin on the line. Most of you don't swing the bat enough. The year Babe Ruth became the, the home run king, set the record, he simultaneously set the record for striking out. 
You are not failing enough, which is why you're in the chair you're in. You, you want to get good? Sn uh, snowboard every day for 30 days. We have an expert here. <laughs> He's like, it depends upon who I'm going off a cliff. If I'm going off a cliff, it's because I messed up. Okay? <laughs> like, no, 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 no. Like, <laughs> right, right? Would that be you guys? He goes, does it on purpose, you know? How much do I want? 200 feet of air or 400 feet of air? You do anything. Golf, I'm a golfer. I, I have a personal shopper at Golf Galaxy. That's supposed to be a joke. Okay, but like, <laughs> this is how I like to wear. These are, you know, Adidas slacks, you know, a little uh, Callaway shirt, a, a golf polo. It's just how I, if you die, I'll look like this at your funeral. If you're getting married, I will look like this. It's happy, though. I'll put on a little red. Valentine's red for sure. Like, this is me. You dress the way you want to dress. But here's the deal. You do anything every day for 30 days. Will you be the same person 30 days from now or different? You are not. Do you do open houses every day? Why not? I'll tell you why not. You don't want it bad enough. Mm. Well, if I could just get my hands on you. You got to want, I wanted it so bad. Money? No, to make a difference. To be, to be a light in the darkness. To be able to, people, what do you do now with all your money? Well, my wife and I go, we live in Puerto Rico. And we're like, well, where are people struggling? Ponce. You probably don't know Ponce, but they have swarms of earthquakes. A lot of homes, the doors don't fit. The windows don't close. They, they suffered from Hurricane Maria three years ago. And I go, honey, let's rebuild 100 homes. And we're just quietly doing it. We've been rebuilding home after home after home. Just my wife and I. How would you like to do that? So that's what I'm excited about. <laughs> we, we, we're, 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 we're rescuing orphans. And we're, we're helping widows. And we're feeding. That's what we're doing. Just quietly doing our thing. You know, what do you do with all your money? Uh, my Range Rover's five years old. I could get a brand new one. He's like, well, he drives a Range Rover. I bought it used. You know? I paid half price five years ago, and I could get a new one. I have a nice home in the suburbs. If I stayed in that home and paid the taxes in California, because the IRS allows you to move to Puerto Rico, I, it would cost me $400,000. I live in the suburbs a month. Four, is that a lot of money for a house payment? Would you move to Puerto Rico? Would you be my neighbor? There's 40 EXPers that live there now. It's a tax law. IRS says relocate your corporation to Puerto Rico, and you don't have to pay federal, state taxes, or capital gains. Another strategy, okay? I like Puerto Rico. Now, because <laughs> I'm able to give. I'm able to change the lives of the people of Puerto Rico. And I'm involved in Nicaragua, and we're rescuing 5-year-olds and 7-year-olds and 10-year-olds off trash. The kid, they abandon their kids. You should see these kids. You know what I used to do when I was playing small? Oh, I can't afford it. I'll give when I have my, if you don't give now, you'll never give. Give now. What is he talking about EXP? No, I got off track. Okay, now, so here's the deal. You guys ready? So I get, I get into sales. Um, shocker, right? And I did well because I was willing to fail. So you guys, here's the deal. Real estate is not a capital risk. I mean, it can be if you buy a franchise and that sort of thing. It's an ego risk. You're so, like, let go of my ego. Let go of your ego. You're so busy. I don't care what you do for a living. With those amazing mortgage brokers in the back. Uh, David over there. David Sprague. Did I get it right? Wilcox. Why did I get Sprague? I even brought your car. Oh, that's, David and I had, we had breakfast this morning, David Sprague. That's why I had Sprague. Get a, give me a hug, man. Yeah. I'm a hugger. Welcome. Whoa, whoa. That was kind of personal. Now, <laughs> he's a hugger too. Ten, ten years, ten, no, ten days ago, joined us from Remax after how many years? 22 years. Welcome, David. Give him a hand. That's why. David Sprague for our mouse, but, but David Wilcox from the Mac. I don't have my glasses on. <laughs> Cannot read that. You need to make this bigger. I'm going to call the senior citizen hotline and report your. <laughs> Anyways, I, I said, anyways, call him, call his team. They stood up here. Don't just say, hey, thanks for paying for our event. See ya. Those of you that are into adding value, that care, 
go get one of their cards, send them at least a refinance. Well, what's in it for me? Hopefully nothing. Stop doing stuff for people because they could do something for you. Well, how about, how about helping your home warranty rep? Introduce her, this is a major. How about helping your home inspector? They have goals, they have dreams, they have groceries to buy and car payments to make. How about helping your stager? Well, how little can I pay you to see? How about help introducing them to other people you know? How about your photographer? How about, I guess with me? Now you're winning at life. You're being a light in the darkness. You're the answer to somebody's prayers. They're literally going, oh, God, how am I going to make my house payment today? Why? Because I was that guy. They're doing open houses, and they're like, please, God, send someone through here. <laughs> Eugene's a lonely place. <laughs> Salem, Portland. Not a homeless person, God. I mean, homeless people are great. Help them. That, that came out wrong, but... <laughs> Send me someone who can buy a house, right? You're trying to sell. And then I remember in Antelope, California, I was new to real estate. This is me. And, and like nothing's happening. I go, God's not watching. Oh, please, God. Please send somebody, please, God. Until you've been on your knees or laying down praying to God for some help, you don't want it bad enough. I set a goal because I got frustrated. If you're frustrated here today, congratulations. Frustration's a precursor to breakthrough. If I hope you're just like, that guy's got nothing on me. Sorry. <laughs> that was an extra backup mic. Doesn't work anymore. I'll pay for it if I broke it. Now, here's the deal. Here's the deal. He's got nothing on me. Yeah, I did. I was willing to just, I've, you know why I'm here? And you're there, well, maybe not him, but the rest of you, <laughs> and not him. I'm celebrated here today as the biggest failure in the room. I promise you, I've done more open houses where nobody came. I've done, I've talked to, more, went on more listings and said stupid stuff, but I did it so much I quit saying stupid stuff. And then I'm like, ooh, that worked out good. Next time you dig, ooh, that worked out. And, oh, that worked out even better. Then I get done, I'm like, ooh, that was good, man. Thank you, God, you know. And I nailed it because I was willing to risk my ego and look stupid. Everyone's like, I don't want to look stupid. You need to look stupid. Who here ever became a great tennis player overnight, right? A great um, kite surfer overnight. When I'm kite surfing and I'm up there, 10 miles, just kidding, I've never kite surfed. But <laughs> I'm like, who's like me? I'm like, that big gust of wind could take me. Trust me, dude, you're not getting off the ground too far. You know, maybe 10 feet. Dawn here, 100 feet, 200 feet. But here's the deal. It looks like fun. And someday when I get the courage, I'm going to kite surf. I want to do that, but someday. <laughs> Sound like a real estate agent. Now, be willing to fail. You door knock every day for 30, 60 Krista Proctor, six months, did everything I told her, nothing. But in the six months, she sold, she sold five homes and made $40,000 her sixth month. I can't tell you why she didn't make it. She did everything right. She's personable. She, and it just wasn't happening. It's the most painful thing I've ever seen. But she would not quit. And all of a sudden today, she has a team of 12 agents. She personally, I think she has 12 homes in escrow. Her team probably has 15 homes in escrow. Who would like to have... What is that? Do the math. 27 homes. Is that right? Yeah, 27 homes in escrow right now. Anybody? Be like Krista. Do this for six months with no results. Do it on faith, a belief in things not yet seen. When's he going to talk about EXP? I am talking about EXP. How many think I'm talking about truth here? Let me help you. Here's your life in real estate. I'm excited. I'm depressed. I'm excited. I'm depressed. I'm excited. I'm depressed. I'm excited. I'm depressed. Get off that thing. Get off that. That sucks, right? Just get it over with. You know, stay at Coldwell Baker, stay at Remax, come to EXP, do what you want. But whatever it is you do, put your heart into it and say stupid stuff until you start saying stuff like, ah, I kind of got it. Like, I know exactly what to do on a listing appointment. I got to the point where I had 18 to 28 listings at all times, handpicked, nice people, good energy. That when, that, when you get the one for $3 million, but you're like, she is wackadoodle. He could be a serial murderer, but you're going 3% of 3 million is $90,000.
I could deal with the serial murderer. <laughs> right? I mean, are you with me? You're, you're not listening. Whoever's been around long enough, every time you don't listen to that little voice that goes, don't do it. Yeah, but a million dollar listing, don't do it. But it's $600,000 deal and I need the money. Don't do it. And you're like, I'm doing it. And then you do it. It's six months later when the deal blows apart and they're suing you in federal court. You're like, why did I do this? Or worse yet, it closes three months later and they required a pint of blood and a pound of flesh. If you've been in real estate for a while, do I speak the truth? Yes or not? When you don't listen to that voice that says, don't do it, and you push through it, like on dating apps, does that work out? <laughs> Who could use a little of Glenn's AI on a dating app, 80% success rate? Let's just put that to work and then get me to those, I'll date the 20%, right? I've been married 30 years, but I'd be doing that deal, right? <laughs> if I need, you know, if I was single. Now, let me correct myself. So, oh man, whoop, look at that. That was like the New York ballet, just graceful like an elk. It wasn't, I get it. Now here, so I get in real estate. Oh, we're in real estate. 1996, 97, it's a huge, like, great depression in real estate. Right, Glenn? Um, I sold homes. All I did for years was sell homes. Uh, four and five bedroom homes with pools and palm trees and three car garages and four car garages. And I'd sell these homes, and you had to have a job, a FICO score of 670 or better, and 500 bucks. That's all you needed. And the government said, pick a house, just take one from us, because we own them all, and we don't want them. And I sold homes, you got 500 bucks? Pick a house, pools, in California. And um, I, my first two years, all the homes I sold were 50, 60, 70. I remember when I did one for 88,000. I was getting in the higher end of the market. <laughs> California, is that a good deal? God, he's old. <laughs> I just said what you're thinking, right? So, but that's what it was like. And, and then two years later, I broke into the luxury high end market. I sold a five acre, beautiful home, 3,300 square feet split rail fence, pasture, little horse barn for two horses, sprinklers in the pasture. Ch, 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 ch. Is that good? Are you there? Green pasture, pristine. $128,000. I was rolling now, baby. Do you know what that is compared to a $60,000? What's two and a half percent? Or back then the commissions were three, right? 128, I was rich. Four years later, prices, prices had rose into like 120, 150,000 a house, and I sold 48 of them and made $393,000. I'm like, is this even legal? Is this, is this legal? Like, how many jobs pay 400,000 a year? It was 1999. I was like, oh. <laughs> like, he loves money. No, I just didn't want to not have groceries money, right? I, I, I wanted to quit driving a used Mercedes my neighbor sold me, and the, the rubber mallets that hold the exhaust up broke, and they dragged behind the car with sparks. I didn't like that. I went to Craig and bought the bungee cords and bungee corded up the entire muffler system and sold it that way. <laughs> and bought a new Chevy Tahoe fully loaded. I'm like, oh, yeah, I like risking my ego. This is the last time I drove a car like that. You are a decision away from changing your life. If you're willing to bootstrap it, if you're willing to get on the struggle bus, write this down, get on the struggle bus. Listen to me, struggle is how resistance builds muscle. Struggle builds character and perseverance and hope. Oh my gosh, really? Okay, I have a timer in the front row. She sent me a thing, goes, shut up. No, it didn't say that. So here's the deal, I got, I got time, so. We'll be done next three or four hours. You're going to have a great time listening to me talk. Now, so here's the deal. I forgot what I was going to say. <laughs> Someday you'll be old. Who's ready to start this? All right, so let's get started. So fast forward, I do great things at Remax, and I liked Remax a lot. I won plaques. I won um, trophies, you know, glass trophies, psh, plaques. 
and you put them on your desk for a while, then they make their way to the bookshelf, then you throw them in the trash. What, what are they worth today? But I love my broker. Okay, great. Uh, um, do you have any equity after 20 years? 20 years. Thir 12, 13 years at Remax, liked them. Nine years at Keller Williams, loved them. Never leaving. My office, 500 agents at the corner office. Don Yoakum, stand up. He built that office. Give Don a hand. <laughs> from scratch. I inherited it from Don. I'm like, yeah, this is my office. Got a big ranch, you know, big head. And uh, <clears throat> I'm happy. I'm never leaving Keller Williams. The greatest place on earth. I hope you feel that way about Sotheby's or Compass or your independent shop, wherever you are. I mean, I was ecstatic. Like, I actually felt sorry for anyone who wasn't at Keller Williams. I, like, literally pitied them. Like, you don't get it. And, like, well, I went to Keller Williams. So maybe your Keller Williams did have bad culture where you are, but man, ours didn't. And I was plugged into Mega Camp, Family Union, Bold, uh, Listing Workshops, you know, Masterminds, you know, all this stuff. I was just thriving. Liked Remax. Loved Keller. Five years ago, woman calls me from Dallas. And... And usually that's a bad thing if a woman, right, that sounded wrong. But anyways, so she calls me, she says, hey, Brent, I want you to check out EXP. I heard you speak two years ago at Haas Pratt Seminar in Plano. You were amazing. Um, I really would love your opinion. I'm like, well, yeah, sure. What do you got? I'll take a look. Call people with good energy. Do I have bad energy or good energy? And I don't mean that in a cocky, arrogant, narcissistic way. But I know I have good energy because I, when I enter a room, I'm going to lift the room. Now, I don't walk in like this all the time, but it was my job to lift this room. Am I, am I trying, right? Am I, I'm not, I know I'm doing. And so when you go to church, do you lift the room? When you come in, do people go, oh, crud, Bob's here. <laughs> you ever had a job and, and oh, Cindy's sick today. She is? Ha <laughs> ha, <laughs> party! Cindy's not here. You don't want to be that person. And if your name's Cindy, it was just an example. It's nothing against you. But... A long story short, is my zipper down? No, okay, good. <laughs> it was like literally felt drafty all of a sudden. Oh my God, my zipper's down. That was just my moment. Stay out of it, okay? But I'm like, if my zipper's down, I got to check. Now, so that wasn't a part of the deal. I was really kind of worried. Um, so, where was it? Oh yeah, watch the model. I just watch it to be nice. I mean, I'm like, talking to telemarketers. Where's James? Over there. James raised his hand, my operations manager and now my business partner. I talked to telemarketers. Hey, hang in there. I'm not going to buy from you, but you got a hard job and you got a family. Just keep going, keep going. Someone's going to buy. Hang in there. James is like, get off the phone, Gove. I'm the guy who encourages telemarketers. So let's just you and me have a talk for a moment here. They're like, they hang up on me. I've never hung up on a telemarketer. Like, that guy was so weird. Told me to hang in there and bootstrap it and you're going to make something of your life. Risk your ego. Don't worry about what these people are saying. You're going to meet eight holes a -holes along the way. Forget them. Think about the yeses. Think about the good stuff. Dwell on the positive, not the negative. Right? Anybody married? Dwell on the positive, not the negative. You dwell on the negative, you get the big D. What's that? It ain't a diamond. This is divorce, right? It's the Grand Canyon. I don't feel close to her. I don't feel close to him. Yeah, because all you do is thinking about what's wrong with them. Listen to me. If only they could be perfect like you. <laughs> I didn't live at home in 2010 for eight months. Why? I don't know. I'm just a peach. <laughs> right? I'm so easy to be married to me. My wife deserves five. So we've been married 30 years. Let's hear it from my wife, right? <laughs> God wasn't finished with me. <laughs> I had some things to learn about being present. The downturn, I was working way too hard, was not present. I hated that when the counselor first said that. I just wanted to punch him in the face. I go, do you realize what you sound like? Mr. Gove, you need to be more present. I'm like, you're an idiot. <laughs> Anyways, another story. <laughs> so I watched this. At the end of the thing, I lean over my computer. Just watch it to be nice. I went, I'm in shock. He go, what do you mean? I go, I just agreed to watch this to be nice. I'm floored that there's something better than Keller Williams. Absolutely floored. But how's their culture? Phenomenal. All the stars and the positive people are giving it a shot. It's all the happy people, right? Not that there aren't some that are still there. But they're here. The culture's great. Let me ask you a better question. How's your retirement? 
How's your equity? How much equity have those, has those, have those medallions brought you? The plaques, the trophies, it gets down to equity. But I love my broker, I got a good deal. I only paid $50 a transaction. Is that a good deal, yes or no? It's great. Let me translate that for you. I love renting. My landlord mows the lawn. He actually brings me coffee. And I'm paying off his house. And in 20 years, I'll have nothing. But I have a good deal. I have a guy pay $50 a deal. Is that not what you just said? What do we tell renters? Look, I know your payment might be a little bit more. But in 20 years, you're going to have something. Is that not true? And so is EXP the least amount of... No. But, it, but, but they pay, you know, maybe some of those really low-cost shops pay 6000 a year. And ours is sixteen. That's 10000 more. But if you could actually develop equity. Uh, many of my agents have not recruited agents. They haven't gone and done that. But they have a million, two, three, four, five million dollars worth of stock just by winning stock awards. They didn't recruit agents, they just sold real estate. You know what I had after 13 years at Remax? Nothing. I had trophies and plaques. You know what I had after nine years at Keller Williams? Nothing. I had recognition, number one, number two in Northern California. Remax, number 11 worldwide, number one in California. 5,000 home sales without REO. Ask me what that pays me today. Nothing. I had to grind year after year. So then I find DXP. What is DXP? Let's see. It's this man. It's a, every once in a while, someone who's super brilliant comes along. He is the guy, a Richard Branson, a Bill Gates, a Steve Jobs, a Henry Ford. And he creates a model. It's a cloud-based model that just like Netflix, just like Amazon, just like Airbnb, like Uber. I thought Uber was crazy. Get in a stranger's car and let them drive you through the woods. Oh, great plan. <laughs> Hell no. I, I Ubered here from Seattle because our flight got canceled. 1200 bucks. <laughs> hell no, but I did it anyway. But I, sorry, I said hell. It's bad. But okay, heaven there. So get equal time, right? So it's real. <laughs> You'll find out one day. Anyways, well, by the way, if you're not religious and you're in real estate, you will be. <laughs> you're like... I didn't believe in the devil, but I do now after the Andersons. You know what I'm talking about. Your, your assistant goes, you want me to put him in the database? You're like, no, 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 no. Do not put Bob or Tim or Sally or Tim and Jana in the database. Never again. Don't even say their words. There's a cuss can. If you say their name, it goes in the cuss can. If you've been around, am I right? I'm right because I was you. This is springy now. Um, so Tony Robbins noticed the cloud-based gig. It's not a bed and breakfast. What's in their name? Airbnb, cloud-based. I'm thinking, oh, yeah, that's a really great idea. I'm gonna, you're going to come rent my house, sleep in my bed on my pillow. Maybe I did the sheets. Maybe I didn't. Do you want to? Isn't that weird? It's like, oh, is anyone like me? Like, I don't mind the Hilton or the Hyatt or the Westin or, you know, I could do the Holiday Inn of, in a pinch or Super 8 or whatever I got to do, the Hampton Inn or whatever. But do you want to go to and just get in their bed and sleep, put their pillow? And I thought Airbnb was a horrible idea. Did it matter to Airbnb? By the way, you can add 100 on top of that. It's over 130 billion now. Clobbered Hilton. How's Zoom doing? How's DoorDash doing? How's Travelocity doing? How's your travel agent doing? Right? How's Kodak doing? How's Pan Am doing? How's Tower Records doing? How's anything that isn't technology driven? Well, I, I'm just not a tech guy. Stop it. You sound like a 14-year-old. Clean your room. <laughs> well, it's hard for me, you young kids. Suck it up. Did I not? Mm. Did I not say... That if you want to be successful, you need to be uncomfortable. Your future lies in the realm of being, I know, it's about my friends are at the Century 21 office. If they're your friends, they'll be at lunch. <laughs> Otherwise, they're not your friends. When I left Remax, my friends just say, you're dead to me, man. <laughs> now, the management did, right? <laughs> they were a little pissed. When I left Keller Williams, they said, oh, my God, EX, what? Worst idea of your life. And they told me the same thing. Remax told me KW would destroy my life, did it? KW told me EXP would destroy my life, did it? No, it's way better. 
Each time it was better, right? But I went, if, if it doesn't work, I'll just go back to Remax or back to Keller Williams. What's the harm in failing? What did I tell you? You aren't winning enough because you're not failing enough. The more you fail, the more you win. And, and the less you fail because it's called practice. You get, you get someone, those kids that just won the national championship from Kentucky last night, they shot thousands of free throws. They shot thousands of jumpers. Soccer, hockey, Wayne Gretzky, he's missed more goals than anybody else in Canada. But is he celebrated or despised? Will Smith, celebrated or despised? Just kidding. Now, okay. I know I couldn't help it. I'm going to jump on. You come up, punch me in the face, I will. And then Randy will get you in. I got a few friends up here, so don't even think about it. Uh, trust me, you, you coming for me, I got friends, right, Don? Can I count on you, Randy? Yeah, I got friends. <laughs> I had friends. Now, you like staying at my place, Randy? He's my golf buddy. We golf all the time. So, we're a cloud-based campus. You will have an office. We provide Regis 3,000 locations worldwide. They have them everywhere. There's competitors to Regis. I moved into a Regis. I started getting listings and buyers. I never got any listings and buyers at Keller Williams or Remax because they're all what? Agents. Do agents go, here, take my buyers. Take my, it just, just didn't happen. And so we have a CRM lead gen called KV Core, a database. All of our agents get this. I had friends paying 600 a month. At EXP, we give it to you for our tech fee of $50 a month with Skyslope, with Breakthrough, with the Regis membership. Four things, 50 bucks a month. Pretty good. 600 a month for one of these tools on your own. Pretty good, right? Now, live training. This is a live training, but we have 50 hours a week in the cloud. You can attend at home nursing that cute little baby, that four-month-old. I went up to that mom. How old? She was four months. I go, so sweet. Your first? She goes, no, my 14th kidding I made that up okay but I want to see if you guys are listening it's her fourth it's her fourth ask questions so here's the deal then we have live this is Sacramento just like here everywhere we go last yesterday in Seattle we had 600 every room looks like this EXP is blowing up it's a movement we are here you could say um, DoorDash doesn't exist right I'm gonna hire anybody to get my food and no, you know I mean, you don't know what they're doing, right? Oh, that's a great idea. Some teenager all tatted up and crazy. And I have kids with tattoos. I'm not picking on you tattoo people. My daughter snuck one in, and we were houseboating for Father's Day. She took her sweats off, and she had a bikini on. And there was a little rose right there. I'm like, ah! My sweet 17-year-old Sarah. Happy Father's Day, Dad. She didn't, she forgot she was hiding it from me for four months. We have a really good relationship. We don't hide nothing. <laughs> Anyways, but, you know, some, never mind. But I didn't like DoorDash either. I didn't like when they changed the MLS. I've never ordered from Amazon. I'm the only one in the room. I'm like, why? I don't know. I'm just sticking with it. But here's the deal. It didn't matter. It's all coming. You couldn't stop the rotary phone from becoming a push-button phone. You couldn't get rid of your, I, well, I like my BlackBerry. Do you use it now? Do you download your music? Do you listen on YouTube, Pandora, iTunes? Life's changing. You can do this. But Henry Ford noticed it 100 years ago. If you think you can, you probably can. And if you think you can't, you're probably right. A man or a woman's about as happy as they make up their mind to be. Decide what you're going to dwell on. I dwell on the good things. Does stuff happen? Yes. And you can focus on it and go, that guy from Copal Banker, that gal from Remax, that, that couple from EXP, I'm in the same company, and they took my buyers. Nobody took anything from you. They gave more value than you did. You can get better or you can get bitter. The choice is yours. And let me tell you, the biggest room in the world is what? The room for improvement. Write that down. Like, nope, not me. I'm awesome. I have the best body in, right here. <laughs> I'm the best lover. I'm the best wife you ever saw. How do you think you could get better? Honestly, can you improve? So you could have a different future. Some of you 
Your mind is just falling into that rut. This guy's full of BS. I can't believe him. I can't believe him. You're in that rut. I'll prove it to you. There's ruts. Say the word silk. silk. What do cows drink? Water. They drink water. Cows drink water. <laughs> that was a fifth grade joke, but it worked. <laughs> so here's the deal. You sit there and you just automatically respond a certain way. I opened my mind to the possibility of EXP five years ago. I remember thinking after Dick Dillingham, the regional owner of Keller Williams and Mike Brody, looked at me with like fire in their eyes and whoa, just fell off. Whoa, I may just do it. But anyways, and, 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 and <laughs> how far can I get off? Now, so passion, sincerity, they meant it and they promised me XP would be gone in two years. That was three years ago. Are we gone? We're a multi-billion dollar company that's debt free with over a hundred million dollars in the bank. I have a lot of my friends have become multi-millionaires, paid off their homes, paid off their parents' homes, bought homes for cash for their parents, paid off investment property. Will that happen to you? Maybe, maybe not. Past performance of our stock is no guarantee of the future. And right now the stock market is getting hammered. It happens. But guess what? Remember when COVID hit, the stock market went down? It was like, oh, you should buy this, 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 and this. And you didn't, right? Including me. I told my wife, don't buy nothing, <laughs> right? Oh, wait a minute. Buy toilet paper. If you can find toilet paper, that's a good investment because, you know. <laughs> uh, anyways, I did take a roll of toilet paper from the hotel room when it hit. My wife's like, there's no toilet paper left. I'm like, mm, they got next to one in my room. Still have it in my closet to remind me how silly I was. <laughs> you never know. I got my emergency reserve. But we have meaning. We are booming. So there's equity opportunities. When you close your first home with EXP, you get stock. When you cap, you get stock. When you're for an agent, you get stock. When you cap and do 20 sales, you get $16,000 worth of stock. There's an agent equity program. Our founder came up with an agent equity program for you. Tell me about the agent equity program at Berkshire Hathaway, at, at um, Windermere. Tell me about the agent equity program for Remax. Tell me about the agent equity program, not the profit share. The agent equity. When you leave, you could sell it for um, maybe half a million dollars, maybe a quarter of a million, maybe a million. I don't know what your situation. The more you give, the more you get. The more you help. You get My first year, I got 52 stock awards, Right? What if you only get 20 or 30? How many stock awards did you get last year? My friend David, David, did you work hard for Remax for 20 something years? Yeah. How many stock awards were you awarded from Remax? Zero. Compass, Sotheby's. But I love my brokerage. How many stock awards did you get? It's you think, I love renting. It's great. <laughs> mm, good for you. Because is rent going up or down? And what will you have after 20, 25, 30 years? Regret. You will have regret. I will help you. The person who bought you here will help you. All kinds of stock awards. And then a revenue sharing chart, seven levels, copied from the greatest real estate company on the planet for many years. That will be surpassed in the next 24 months. Keller Williams, largest real estate, you can't deny it. They were the, love them, hate them, doesn't matter. They were the most successful real estate company of all time, Keller Williams, KW. And the XP is going to pass them in 24 months. You watch. Now, and I want good things for Keller Williams. Some people are going to stay at Coldwell. Some people are going to stay at Coldwell. We want good things. Is Hilton still in business, even though Airbnb is a $130 million, billion dollar company? It's a big world. People can stay at Century 21. They can stay at Remax. If they want to stay, let's help them. Let's help them succeed. Let's bring value and be okay with them staying at Compass for 25 years. Because that's what human beings do for their human beings. But are you doing that? Have you listened to podcasts? Have you listened to TED Talks? Have you done YouTubes? Have you flown places and gathered information and grown as a human being? So you have something. I don't know if they have anything to give. Uh, so I bet you this. Matthew, this is Matthew's seats reserved. Now here's the deal. What's on TV tonight? Got Hulu Platinum. Amazon Platinum. I'm a, I get free, you know, stars, HBO. What do you want to watch? How's that program working out for you? You deserve, you look like a friend of mine, Jim Adams. You look just like him. It's freaking me out. Um, <laughs> but you're better looking than Jim. He's not here. All right, I'll say that. So here's the deal. 
How's that? Never stop growing. You're not too old. You're not too young. Self-loathing never served the world. Some of you just hate yourself. I'm too fat. I'm too tall. I said something stupid. Good. I say stupid stuff all the time. It's going to be my book. Say stupid. You're on track. You said something stupid? Yes. Because you'll do it a little less stupid next time. And the day after that, risk your ego all day. You've got 24 hours tomorrow. What are you going to do? Set a goal. Show property. Who? I don't know. Have a burning. Somehow, someway, someone's going to see something. Start tearing through the MLS. Call the expireds. Are you willing to show it if I have a bar? Yes, I would. You could save the listing commission. Just pay me 2.5%. Okay, yeah. And they go, I found a home. It's not in the MLS. Well, there's not much inventory. You create the inventory. You are the market. Interest rates, oh my gosh, FHA are approaching 5%. Don't be afraid. You are the market. You are not a victim of the economy. You're either a victor or a victim. You either can or you can't. The decision is yours. Am I making this stuff up? Man, you could do so much later today, but you have your wandering generality. Man, I took, I took what, what, what John Maxwell had to say, add value, add value, add value. Well, how do I do that? I got beat on a listing. Well, if you list with me, you get three hours with a licensed general contractor, and he's going to do anything you want. And if you list with me, my cleanings crew is going to come over for an hour, three of them, and scrub toilets, scrub your showers. And if you list with me, my stager is going to come over and give you points on it. And when you list with me, I use a professional photographer. And when you list with me, I'm going to have a window washer. Come. And when you list with me, I'm going to, um, you know, boom, boom. And you can make a whole list when you list with me. Here's what I do. And all that stuff, you can get 100 bucks here, $200 here. And then you'd say, hey, I'm going to give you so much business. Just bill escrow. When it closes, you get paid. You get paid. You get, I won't do that. Okay, find somebody else. Find somebody else. Will you do it? Yeah, I'll do that. I've had roofers put on roofs and wait till close of escrow to get paid $14,000. Why don't you? Because you didn't ask. Because you weren't willing to fail. You, you didn't want to be told no. You didn't want to look like a fool. You know what I did for that roofer? I gave him so much business, he was happy to put on a $14,000 roof and wait 90 days to get paid. Are you with me? You can compete. But listen to me. If you think you can't compete, I got news for you. You're right. Are you with me? Your teenage daughter, Dad, nobody loves me. Boys don't love me. I'm so depressed. Honey, it, Mr. Wright's out there. Mom and I are praying for you. He, you good at, no, you're right. You are a loser. You're never going to get married. Your life sucks. It's going to end in total darkness and blackness. What do you say to your kids? I'm, you were just a big kid. You are a big kid. You are a big We're all kids. I'm a kid. I'm a 56-year-old kid. Sometimes I need a pep talk. I need to be told I can. Are you with me? Oh, man. I'm getting so excited. All right, now. So what are these percentages? Like three and a half percent, that's nothing. I have a team, I get 50%. That's what I saw when I saw that. I get 50% from my new agents. I get 40% from my veteran agents. I get 30%, 70, 30, from my stars. I get 3.5%, Glenn, what a joke. What a chump. <laughs> We're friends. Maybe we used to be friends, but um, 3.8, they, anyone they tell, that's tier two, 3.8. 3.8%. Oh my gosh, that's nothing. It was in addition to my 50%. So now I was getting 50%. The company would collect 20. They'd give me 3.5 of, of the, are you guys with me? It was, I'm like, oh, I get it. You think, well, that doesn't seem like much. Take a penny. I'll give you a million dollars now, cash. Or I'll give you a penny doubled every day for 30 days. What do you want? I'll take the million dollars. Well, uh, if you double a penny every day for 30 days, who knows what it adds up to? Anybody? What? Over, is it that much, really? <laughs> I always thought it was two or three million, but he looks like he's in the know. Give him a hand, 14 million. But even if it was what Brent thought, making a mistake in all of you, doesn't know Jack, but, um, and I thought it was two or three million. I'm gonna have to do it. Some math guy working out on your phone. But here's the deal, one plus one is two, double it four, double it eight. Now you're up to 16 cents by the fifth day. But when you get done with 30, it's, <laughs> Glenn's doing it. But when, <laughs> but, <laughs> but when he's actually doing it, <laughs> I love him. <laughs> he pays me. I love you a lot. Love you a lot. <laughs> now, so, so here's the deal. This might look like a lot. All I did was tell 25 people in my first five months, 
Five people a month. While I went on listing appointments every day. While I held deals together every day. While I dealt with appraisal issues. While I dealt with disclosures. While I, that's what I did every day. I told 25 people. So what happened my first 10 days? October 21st, 2016, I joined EXP. October 21st. I want you to, oh, excuse me. I almost face planted in Dylan's lap. <laughs> that would have been awkward. Now, so here's the deal. My first 10 days, my revenue share check was $1,900. Is that a little or a lot? If you tripped over that out there, $100 bills, would you pick them up? Would you be like, $1,900? bucks? No name. I get to keep it. You look around. Anybody lose some money here? Who'd be happy? It's 10 days. My first 30 days, my revenue share came in. I just told some agents. They didn't pay me. He paid me. XP paid. Revenue sharing. They're cloud-based. They don't have the overhead. $5,000. My first month. Would that make your house payment? Yes or no? How about your car payments? You're a one month away. What I do? I, I did tell... Ugh, Probably 15 agents in my first, like, 40 days. I was excited. I won't kid you. Shocker, huh? <laughs> and, and I ended up doing 25 in my first five months, tier one. And then they told people tier two. Then they told people. I thought, maybe I'll have 80 to 100 people the first year. But what happened was the second month, second full 30 days, my third month, it was $10,000. It wasn't sustainable. The fourth month, there was $10,000. I audited EXP. Actually, audited them. I thought it doubles every month, 19, 5, 10. I expected $20,000. I was depressed that I only got 10. Who would be bummed four months from now if you only get $10,000 from EXP or from Berkshire or from John L. Scott? Would you be depressed? Every month, 10000 Would you be sad? But I was like, I wasn't sad, but I'm like, why is it not 20? Like, how many of you would be like flabbergasted? Like, just 10? So I, we audited EXP, and we just, it was February. It's the shortest month of the year. We didn't close a lot of homes. There were uh, January closings. You get paid the following month on the 22nd, right? And there were December sales, which is a really big month for sales or can be a lean, little leaner, right? So I told my wife, March, five-week month, it'll be 15 grand. It'll grow 50% in a month, not a year. 50% a year, good or bad? How about 50% in a month? She was, honey, 10 grand a month is awesome. You never got anything from Remax but Starbucks cards. And Kelly Williams, you got profit sharing. You told 55 people, and it was 700 a month on average. You had a few months that were 2,900 and 23, 19, but on average it was $700 a month. And it was weekend fund money, mad money, whatever you want to call it. But I mean, 10 grand a month? And how many think it's a good idea to not promise your spouse something's going to happen that it doesn't happen? I said, no, take it to the bank. It'll be 15. I was wrong. It was $27,000 my fifth month. Is that a literal lot to you? Five months from now, if you, what did I do? I told 25 of my friends, check out EXP. Watch, write this down. I got went all over the place today, tripped, almost landed in Dylan's lap. Watch the model explained.com. It's edited down to 33 minutes. It lays it out. Watch it again. Watch it with your spouse tonight. Watch it again. It's, it's polished. It's perfect. It's been approved by the attorneys marketing at eXp. The model explained. The model explained.com. Watch that. Watch it with your spouse. So 27,000. And then that was five and a half years ago. And it's been compounding ever since. I won't go beyond that. But I think even 10,000 a month. She's funny. All right, she's got these great signs. Okay, so I am wrapping up. All right, now she gave me the sign like, hurry up and shut up. RevShare Plus, we've added to it. All those numbers, RevShare Plus, we're actually giving you 50% of the profit of success coaching and success lending, right? There's, we bought Success Magazine. Been around 120 years, one of the oldest publications in, in, um, in the U.S. But 50% of the coaching program, Keller Williams made $100 million a year. 50% of that would be 50 million a year to you guys. 50% of lending. There's seven times the money in lending that there is in real estate, right? Um, we have success coaching with, uh, with um, and the cool thing is you can use different various things. Uh, we got Jer Jarek Robbins, Tony Robbins' son, running our coaching program. If you want to check out success coaching, and then you, if I want to have a different result, you should get your phone out and just look into that right there. I have coaches. I've always had coaches. Yeah, I'd love to see the phones go up. You should just grab that and look into that. Um, Jarek Robbins, a brilliant guy. 
Okay, give everyone one more second to get that. And then we have um, success lending, a little bit about success lending there. Um, there's a little squibbly on that. That one I'll give less time because we have a su supporter of this. Sorry, guys. <laughs> Need to audit my slideshow. Didn't know you paid for the event. Talk to these guys, okay? Um, <laughs> Woohoo! Um, uh, uh, we have a home warranty, 50% of that. It's your office. They provide all that, but you don't get a dollar of it. We get 50% of all profits day one back in the revenue share. That's why we're plussing it. We're making it better. We have silver line title. It's like 10 times the money in title. Um, you know, you could use your current title company, and not everyone's going to use this, but here, 50% of all the profits day one go back into revenue share for the entire company. It's not do open 14 titles, get paid 14 times. It's take the profit ESP gets, and it goes across everyone. You don't even have to use lending, title, coaching, and all of you are going to receive money from it. It's spread out. That's why it's not a RESPA violation. If you do 10 loans and you get paid 10 times, RESPA violation. You give title 60 title policies and you get paid 60 times from the title company, RESPA. Are you with me? That's how we're doing it without RESPA violations. Clearwater Healthcare. We hope to cut a deal with them where we self-insure. We'll make a million dollars a month, $12, $12 million a year. Back to you guys, right? And I was paying 4000 a month for my family. Now I pay two. Picked up dental and vision. It is phenomenal. Go to any doctor, any place, anywhere in the world. We don't take that HMO. We don't pay that PPO. Phenomenal. Talk to Margo. Go there. Um, look them up. Google them. Um, and then finally... We, uh, well, I'm going to skip past this for now. I'll come back to it. Um, we're, we're in 20 countries. We're opening 21. It says 19 because we just opened another one. We're about to open New Zealand, 21. We're a worldwide opportunity. You will be in India. You will be in South Africa. You will be in Portugal and France and Italy. I'm in 20 countries. My whole life, I sold hundreds of homes in Roseville, California. What's that? It's like Medford. It's like Ashland. It's like Eugene. It's just a town where I live. You live in your town. And was I thinking about Manhattan? Was I thinking about Toronto? Was I thinking about Paris and people selling homes in, in different parts of the world and me getting paid? I have hundreds of agents in India. They sell homes in India. I get paid commission from India. Do you? No, because you love your broker. <laughs> you only pay $50 a deal. I'll pay $10 a deal to my broker. I'm going to continue to rent. Are you with me? What do we tell our buyers? Stop the madness. Suck it up, buy a home, paint your own wall, do some gardening, check the pool chemicals yourself. And in 20 years, you will hug me like David did. You will hug me. My kids made $400,000 already in the last five years. Their friends, didn't, they just they did the apartment thing. It was more convenient, less scary. My son was scared when he bought his first home. He's 21. He was scared. He said, I don't know, Dad. It's a big expense, that three-bedroom house on a quarter acre, overlooking five acres with pine trees. It's expensive in California, right? It was $235,000. Is that a good deal? It's a great deal. I goes, Dad, I got to pray about it. It's a respectable thing, right? You know what my answer was? Son, I prayed about it. You're buying the house. <laughs> <laughs> and, I, and he bought the house. You know what he paid? $750. USDA financing. There's financing out there. That was it, 750 bucks. I didn't give him the money. Daddy didn't give him the money. Daddy lets his kids sweat and suffer and struggle because it's good for them. <laughs> give them the money. Get your butt out of the house and get to work. Suffer like we did, right? Freaking millennials. Now, that's in the Bible, by the way. Now, there it is. No desk fees, no royalties, no franchise fees, 80-20 split, $16,000 cap, 100% commission. Take a picture. Take a picture. I'm moving on. $149 to sign up. $85 a month is your overhead at eXp. Um, you get an office for $85 a month. Go to Regis. You won't have a private office, but they have internet, cafes, Wi-Fi, copier, scanners, and people who buy and sell. What do you do? I'm a stockbroker. What do you do? I'm one of the top agents in Salem. Oh, my gosh. I need to buy a place. We just moved here from Seattle. I've got my temporary space here at Regis. Um, can you help us buy a place? Sure. What are you looking for? Ah, a million, million five out in the country. Oh, I, you know, I might fit you in. <laughs> that happens all the time. Get out of your dumb. Uh, but I'm saving 50 bucks at my brokerage. How many deals are you getting out of there? Nothing. Become a shareholder. Join EXP Realty. I'm going to end with this, some of our technology um, right here. I'm going to offer a beta test to everybody in this room. 
EXP is cutting edge technology. So we have come out, not, not EXP, I'm trying to get EXP to do the deal and this particular company wants to do the deal. It's called Wormhole Technologies, Wormhole Labs. And anybody have any virtual tours? Right, do you? You ever see 50 people visited, you get, you get numbers. 180 people visited my virtual tour, clicked on my listing, 290 people. How many of them do you actually talk to? Oh, like none. So what Wormhole does is you put the virtual tour on it. It says, click here to see the kitchen. What it does, it puts an avatar body on, puts them in the kitchen. They're in an avatar body. It's technology. And they're walking around the kitchen in 3D, and then they go through the sliders. Click here. They go out in the backyard. They're looking, overlooking the lake, the deck. They're walking around looking at the house. It's just a click of a button. Anybody can do it in this room. A five-year-old can do it. What's different about Wormhole is it sends your phone a push notification. It says, hey, Don Yoakum is standing in your kitchen of your $900,000 listing in Salem. Would you like to join him? How many would, if you had the time and you weren't doing anything, would you go, yes? And then he goes, I'm an avatar now. And he's an avatar. I go, hey, Don, I know this is a little weird, but we have great tech at EXP. I'm the listing agent of this beautiful home. Do you have any questions? Well, let's actually role play, okay? I'm going to pick someone I don't know, so this is not a setup. Um, who's an EXP agent so I don't get some scoundrel from some other brokerage? She looks sweet. She's a, you know, sometimes the other brother, they want, I'm going to mess him up. She's smiling. She looks nice. May I stand here? Okay, good. Um, your name is? Tamiko. Tamiko. The, it was, it, all I saw was Miko. You're laughing. So Tamiko. So I'm the listing agent on this beautiful property overlooking the river here in Bend, Oregon. Um, it's a seven hundred thousand dollar property. Do you have any questions? Imagine you're a prospect and you just clicked on it and you're there, and all of a sudden I'm there. How many prospects would like to talk to the listing agent? They do in this market. Do they want to talk to them? And you go yes. What, what would probably come out of your mouth? What question would you ask me? Do you think? Because as, as if you were a buyer and you were kind of excited about the property. Can I use it as a short term rental? Okay, we're getting somebody else now. <laughs> That's funny, man. That was not expecting you to say that. So I'm going to coach her. Never heard that answer. Yeah, I picked an EXP agent. Can I use it as a short-term rental? Um, okay, I'll go with it. Um, hell, I don't know. <laughs> no. Is there an HOA? You're so sweet to me. Go, you're cute. Okay. What most buyers say when they call you is, is it available in this market, right? Is that not what they say? Or no? Is there a shortage of inventory? Do you have... Do you have any offers? Thank you, Tamiko. Give her a hand. She's so cute. You're so cute. Is there an HOA? Anyway, it's adorable. But usually they go, do you have any offers? Is it available? Um, and, and then I go, yeah. And, and then they go, um, and, and then I say, yeah. And I go, I have three offers with two more coming in. Does, do listing agents say this? Do you guys say this to people? And I go, Tamiko, um, do you have an agent? Oh, she doesn't have an agent. I said, well, here's the deal. Anyone can hear us. We're in a virtual environment. Would you like me to coach you how to get this home for you? Okay, so I'm going to push a button. It's going to have me call your cell phone. Say, but I haven't given you my number. Say that. I know. We have great technology at EXP. It's just going to connect me in one touch. Your cell phone's going to ring. We're going to leave this virtual tour and have a private discussion where I'm going to coach you how to get this house. And the good news for you is I don't represent the other three offers, and I don't represent the two coming in, and I would love doubling this property. And I'll tell you exactly what you have to do to get this property. Would you like that, Tomiko? Awesome. Boom. Tomiko Brinko, her phone's going to ring. We have that technology. And guess what? I start talking to her about the property. Here's what you got to do. You got to close in three weeks. You got to call David Wilcox through the card. What is it? I said it wrong. I got it right? Sprague, you're messing me up. All right. David Wilcox. You got to call Mac. What? What's it called? Annie Mac. Got to call Annie Mac. They're going to get you approved. We're going to close in three weeks. Um, my highest offer is that um, we're listed at seven. I got an offer at 740. Um, you're going to have to beat that. I recommend coming in at 750. Buy it as is. The sellers want to stay for 45 days after close. And so, um, Tamiko, if you want to let them stay 45 days past close of escrow, close in 21 days, buy it as is, I will present that offer in the next 30 minutes. Would you like, do you, do you want the house? Do you, you husband here, take the deal? He thinks he should, do you guys know each other? All right, good, just checking. He says take the deal. Should she take the deal? 
Okay, so I'm doing a wind farms right now. Haven't shown her the property personally. Don't even know her. Now I'm going to have my lender call you. Do you have a pre-approval yet? Okay, good. We're but we're not. We're going to use David. And um, <laughs> if you want this property, we have to use my lender because I don't know your lender. I'm sure it's nice, but I can't vouch for your lender. But I can. I could vouch for David Wilcox at Mac Lending. God, I can't remember it. Was that Beanie? Annie Mac, Annie Mac, Annie Mac, Annie Mac. Yeah, Annie Mac. Know them, I've worked with them for 10 years. And so you use them. David's going to call you in the next one minute. I text him, I got a live one. You got to drop what you're doing and call. And, and how would you guys like someone? They, they're going to close and let's rock and roll, baby. And then they call you, they do it. And yeah, they, she can do it. I ran her credit. I said, good. I'm sending you the offer at 750 and put up a $10,000 deposit. We close in three weeks. We're going to let the seller stay 45 days. And I'm going to get you this house before 5 o'clock today. How would you like this to go to dinner and celebrate this new home on the river? How many think you could sell more homes? Yes? So we're hopefully, I'm hoping Glenn is going to do a sort of a partnership or allow them to be a preferred vendor. So I'm doing a beta test for 100 agents. It's free. I paid thousands of dollars to do the beta test. Free to you. 90-day beta test. Here's the catch. You have to have active listing to participate. If you don't have an active listing, you can't do it. But if you download that, I'll let you be a part of my beta test for 90 days. If it goes as well as I think it will, let's say that you double in 10 properties this year. Would that be good? Some of you listing agents are like, are you kidding me? Push a button, talk to prospect. This thing's awesome. So... Thanks for having me today. Enjoy your week. It's been great being with here. Adios. Thank you. You guys, did I not warn you to hold on to your seats? <laughs> I tried to tell you. I tried to tell you to hold on to your seats. You thought I was kidding. Okay, so as we wrap this up, you guys, we've got a door prize drawing, and I also have one more person I really need to recognize in this room. Nikita, where are you at? Of course, I wouldn't look right in the front. <laughs> Please stand up so everybody can give you a round of applause. You guys, this lady put on this event. She is the wizard behind the scenes, and we love her to pieces, so thank you for all the work you put into this. Um, we have a door prize drawing that, do you want to come up and we can, Randy's doing it? All right, Randy, get on up here. Going to get somebody some prizes. While he is coming up here, there is one uh, other item I want to make sure that you guys are aware of. There is a wealth building event on May 17th uh, in the Albany um, area. Uh, going over crypto, flipping, and infinite banking. If you have an interest in uh, being invited to that, please make sure to connect with Nikita up here and maybe give a business card for that. And as we, I, we need a drum roll. Who can give us a drum roll? Let's go. Drum roll, drum roll, drum roll. What's this for? Gift basket. Okay, we got a gift basket over here. Here we go. I'm not looking. And... I think she wrote her name on there. I know. I can't read it. Who wrote Ma their Maria name on a Mariana? Mariana. Oh my God. I, yes. <laughs> hey, smart. You took a card and wrote your name on it. Good All job. Right, you and guys, we have something else? Do we have another one? Okay, okay, awesome. One action item, one goal. You guys heard... You guys heard Brent, you gotta have a goal or you don't even know where you're going, right? So make sure when you leave here, you think about what that goal is. And uh, is there some sunshine out there? Yeah, it is. Go enjoy the sunshine. Thanks for being here, guys. Thank you very much. Appreciate you.